Hello. Thank you so much, Sheila. I wish the famous saying my mom was here to listen to you. Um, dear friends, I, I want to welcome you all. Uh, if there's one regret I have today is that uh, you, know, you all are the people I love, you're the people I admire, and I wish I could spend the next two and a half days just with you, each one of you, <laughs> one, one at a time. And unfortunately, in this meeting, the one bad thing is I don't get to spend that much time with you. But uh, thank you all for coming. It's great to see you here. I want to first thank my team, especially Sheila Creel. Uh, you know, dreams without execution remain just that, a dream. Thanks to Sheila's leadership, uh, including ability to herd cats, uh, we have been able to make this dream real. And, and when I tell you the rest of it today, I, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. We kicked off this movement in January 2013. And we swore to be different because we wanted to get different results. We decided that, first of all, we're going to break down the silos that divide us, unite engineers, doctors, CEOs of hospitals, CEOs of med tech companies, patient advocates, bring us all together to make the healthcare ecosystem. And that new healthcare ecosystem was born. Second, we said we're going to be scientific, but we were not going to be academic about how to solve this great tragedy. And we were going to come up with what we called recipes last year. Now we call them actionable patient safety solutions, or apps. And these recipes, these apps, would have the necessary ingredients and procedures for anyone in any hospital to be able to pick up and implement the solutions that were to the challenges that were killing our friends and families. Third, we ask medical technology companies to share the data, open up the data that their products are purchased for, for the benefit of patients, so that hopefully one day algorithms can be developed where automatically clinicians, families of patients get warned if something bad is about to happen. Fourth, we said as much as we love being around each other, that unless we made commitments, so for hospitals implementing the apps, for medical technology companies to sign a public pledge to share their data, that we weren't going to gather together again. We weren't going to show up unless we made a commitment. And last but not least, we made a very important proclamation, one that I believe is doable, especially with what I've seen happen in just one year, and that is to get to zero preventable deaths by 2020. Now, after we felt like we had this monumental meeting, this summit, where we felt things were never going to be the same again, I think some of us walked away and went home with maybe some fears. You know, we feared, what if? What if this year I return back and I'm just with 20 of my closest friends at this summit? But that did not happen. Not only, as Sheila said, within a short time after we announced the summit, it got sold out, but half the people that are here made commitments. And the other half, who are new, have got their first year pass, but we expect them to make commitments. But on top of that, we got the Joint Commission, Center for Healthcare uh, Improvement, to join us and co-convene this year's summit. And I'm very grateful to them. My other fear was that even with the commitments, no one would have followed through with them. But I can tell you that they did. From Sinai Hospital in Chicago to Intermountain Healthcare System in Utah, they did follow their commitments. And of course, the fear was, OK, they follow the commitments. We do everything we say we're going to do. And we don't make a difference. Well, I'm, I'm here to give you two numbers, 1 and 601. That is how many lives we've saved. We've saved one and 601 lives 
in the past year, you have saved one in 601 lives. Now, why do I give that number like that? Why do I say one plus 601? Because we are here to save one patient's lives. We're here to give one patient's family dignity. And if we can do that 200,000 times in the US, 3 million times globally, then we have solved the problem that plagues us. You know, I don't, I don't like quoting Joseph Stalin too much. <laughs> but he infamously said, one death is a tragedy, a million deaths is a statistic. And you know, we know very well that every death is a tragedy three million times over again. And it's not a statistic. And, and we have to keep in our mind that image of the one. And we have to remember when these people die from preventative causes, it not only affects the entire society, it immediately affects their families, and it affects the doctors, the nurses, the people who took care of them. A person I do like quoting, and I'm going to read this one because I don't want to butcher it, is Roger Waters. Not the torturer will scare me, nor the body's final fall, nor the barrels of death's rifles, nor the shadows on the wall, nor the night when to the ground the last dim star of pain is hurled, but the blind indifference of a merciless, unfeeling world. I'm happy that you're here because you're not indifferent. I'm happy that you're here because you're not merciless and this is, you're not part of the unfeeling world. You're not indifferent to the three million lives lost globally. We have shown we can make a difference. We have shown with our love for patient care, we have saved one and 601 lives. I want to thank you. In the next two and a half days, we are going to set the stage for the next 12 months, where we go from 1 in 601 lives to 1 in 6,010 lives saved over the next 12 months. We can grow it by that order of magnitude. You are the first. It's always the first group that's the hardest. Once they hear about your success, the rest will follow. With great help from the Joint Commission Center for Transforming Healthcare, we're going to introduce three new apps on Monday that are probably responsible for over 100,000 lives lost annually in the US alone. Today and tomorrow, we're going to review the apps that we brought forward last year and renew them and improve them. We'll feature commitments of 2013 from hospitals, for medical technology companies. We'll be joined by one former president of the United States, one former US Surgeon General, one president maker, where's Jim, two US senators, WHO's patient safety envoy, the chief medical officer of Center for Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid Services, and be moved by the music of McKenna Lee and the microfixers and Allison Cross. We'll also award the first humanitarian patient safety awards to a handful of individuals that have made a huge difference in 2013 and have helped save the lives, some that we talked about now, the one plus 601, and have helped us get to where we've gotten to today. So now, before I introduce our featured speaker today, I would like to quote another person I enjoy quoting, President Clinton. We all do better when we work together. Our differences do matter, but our common humanity matters more. 
we have come together, we've united, we've created this healthcare ecosystem, and we're all different. But together, we are human beings. The best thing we can do is to do an act of kindness. Mm -hmm.